We're good. Okay, so, um, so I'm Alex Veltus at Clemson University. Um, and I'll just give a quick overview of some of the things we use uh, the PRP for. And we use not just PRP, we use other platforms like OSG and a lot of things NSF funded and our campus cluster to do our work. And these, I, I can, I, I still have no idea how far I can scale up my work because of these systems. And I thank everybody involved with this from the bottom of my heart. It's been, it's been amazing. Um, and so one of the big things about uh, the PRP is it's a great, it's a democratized platform. It rocks um, where you can go and do do work on it in, in a machine shop, not just like a, a sandbox. You can go out and, and have data intensive resources for machine learning and all that kind of stuff and not spend um, all this money and get fired even with tenure because you have a $500,000 credit card bill from, from Google. It's an absolutely critical resource to have this kind of democratized system for, as we transition, especially in biology and into more cloud platforms, which people, most people have no idea what any of this stuff is. Most people don't know what a command line is. And so we're trying, trying to up, um, upgrade people's skills. In my lab, we do plant and animal work. We use deep learning for personalized medicine applications. We're trying to understand symbiosis and legume roots and understand those at the single cell resolution, what's happening so we can have plants make through a fertilizer. I do a lot of training and I use the Pacific Research Platform Nautilus for, for this purpose, um, as well as some other systems. And we're actually training through my company, Praxis AI, um, and also as a professor, um, how to do cloud computing. And you have to have a platform like this to you have a credit card bill or to teach people who have no money um, how to use the cloud. Um, a lot of this uh, biology is uh, driven by data, and this PRP is a perfect example of a system that can handle the data. Genome caught, you can seek sequence your genome now for 23andMe for, I think they have $50 Black Friday sales in, the, in November. There's 54 petabytes and it's exponentially growing of just DNA sequence data in the NCBI uh, archives. Internet to move the exabyte data first three months of the year. You all know this, it's just a massive uh, flood of data and just the, the beautiful mysteries of the universe just need to be unlocked, locked from it all. This is a picture of my lab. Um, we do wet bench work too, but this is for the computational thing where I have to spend a lot of time just understanding what we're doing in the lab from a workflow perspective. So we automate a lot of these workflows um, to be able to run at, at data intensive scales. Um, and we do this through a lot of what we're doing is through Kubernetes. We use a traditional campus cluster on, in Clemson, which is an awesome, awesome machine, but we're moving a lot, everything we can into the cloud so we can containerize everything and be able to orchestrate, learn how to orchestrate these workflows as they break all the time. These are some of the workflows that we we developed um, uh, over over the course of um, several several years. And the, the plat that you can't have, a, uh, you have to have a platform to run on. PRP is great. We use Cisco's container platform. They've gifted some boxes for us to use. We use Tax Rodeo Experimental Cluster and the Google Cloud Platform for a lot of the development that we use. But we wrap everything in a proper workflow manager, Nextflow now. And all the everything we're doing, we're trying to disseminate through training and through open source software projects to, to people to do kind of standard genomic type work. We're also using the PRP right now for making a data lake for all the genomes that have been sequenced and pre-processed, indexed for everybody to use. Um, we're doing this from a na name defined networking and also hybrid information centric networking, which is a Cisco open source product. I'm trying to get all these out into a data lake so we can pump these into containerized workflows in PRP. I, I, I never could do this without PRP. It's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous idea. There's a system there to be able to do it. So we're really excited about that. Um, I think finally, so also we, we've developed through a CC Star project um, through, through CIDOS, Scientific Data Analysis at Scale, a series of Sci apps like Jupyter Notebooks and NextFlow Workflow Manager APIs and things like that um, that run in the cloud. We have running on PRP. We're able to test this on PRP and try instead of doing on Google. We're test, we've tested on Google as well, and we've built a lot of uh, software to be able to estimate real time, semi real time uh, resource usages on the PRP of how we're you know doing our inefficient compute. So then we can quantify how much money we need to get commercial credits um, and, and future grants. And I just wanted to, I know I go fast, um, but I want to show one thing I just I pulled up. So this, this is my namespace manager for the Nautilus cluster. And I just, I actually have four namespaces here. Um, one is sort of the one we use in the lab, this deep GTEx PRP. We also have a, a development for CIDOS, uh, a, a, one I use for training, teach comp bio. And then a, a, one, a friend of mine, Louisiana Tech, um, has his own namespace that I help him. And I've onboarded people to onto the system using a lot of people in my lab and they're getting excellent tech support from, from PRP. 
And then this list of people actually deleted a whole bunch of people, but these are undergrads, high school students. Uh, there's a guy from Buffalo who's running simulations. He needed more compute. He's on here. And so it's just an amazing playground to be able to, to pull people in and teach them how to do cloud computing. So I'll stop there. <laughs>